All right, you're gonna feel a nice little coolness going in your IV, okay? <sighs> Sunday night. 69-year-old Stephen Brandon recalls the last time he had an opioid four days ago. When I get to really hurting really bad, I abuse it, whatever I can get my hands on. Brandon is candid about his use of drugs off and on since he was 26 years old. Periods of recovery led to relapses. Plus, I'm ashamed of myself because for 13 years, I've worked with people with mental health and substance abuse issues when I was clean. In three, two, one, tap. And that's why Brandon is in Emory University Hospital in Atlanta as part of a clinical trial that is taking a new approach to help deal with withdrawal and cravings. He had his last opioid before midnight on Sunday and checked into the hospital Monday morning at 6 a.m. Hello. How are you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> Psychiatrist Doug Bremner is the director of the Emory Clinical Neuroscience Research Unit. Dr. Bremner has done extensive research on PTSD. I've been doing brain imaging studies and post-traumatic stress disorder for many years and also um, looking at mechanisms of how stress affects cardiovascular disease. Bremner's research has shown non-invasive stimulation of the vagus nerve help people with PTSD. Well, for PTSD, we found a 31% reduction in uh, PTSD symptoms compared to the sham controls. The vagus nerve runs from the brainstem to the abdomen and communicates with nearly all the organs of the body. When activated, it triggers a relaxation response in the body, helping to lower heart rate, reduce blood pressure, and improve digestion. Bremner's latest research into vagal nerve stimulation, VNS, is to see if it can help people with opioid use disorder. Mm -hmm. Researchers have found similarities between PTSD and opioid use disorder. That they were doing studies of, of monkeys where they would show that the, the norepinephrine system, the locus ceruleus, which is in the brainstem, is overactive in both disorders. The overreaction of the locus ceruleus affects brain areas that drive craving. The craving for drugs is physiological. It's, it, it, um, it is guaranteed to happen if you've been using opioids for a long period of time. You're going to have that, that effect of the withdrawal. The sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight response, becomes overactive when someone is in withdrawal. People may experience intense cravings, high heart rate, high blood pressure, sweating, muscle aches, anxiety, insomnia. Activating the vagus nerve, which is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, serves as the break on fight or flight. Dr. Bremner says a pilot study for opioid use disorder already showed vagus nerve stimulation decreased craving, pain, and lowered heart rate. We see acute pain commonly in people in acute withdrawal, and we, we showed that there was a you know, greater than 20% reduction in, in pain that was statistically significant even just with this small pilot study. Stephen Brannon is part of the new larger study of over 100 people that includes coordinators and students from Emory and Georgia Tech. How do you align with, I feel anxious? Anxious to? How bad are your withdrawal symptoms? About 70. Brannon will be in the hospital for a week. And while he is there, he will use a vagus nerve stimulation device that is either the real thing or fake. Nothing to it. He will do this four times a day. Being in care isn't all that bad. On day two, Brandon watches a control video of a postal worker four times. Post, postman video, post lady, excuse me. Boring. On the third day, he watches a video depicting drug use four times. Keep thinking about how badly you wanted to use and how good it felt to finally get that sensation. Before and after the videos, Brandon answers a series of questions. How much anxiety do you have? About 80. Now exhale slowly through your mouth. 
On the second and third days, the days Brandon watches the postal worker video and the drug use video, he has his blood drawn 10 times each day. Researchers are looking for different inflammatory and stress biomarkers to see how their levels are affected during fake or real vagal nerve stimulation. There's also some evidence that people going through withdrawal also have an activation of this inflammatory system. Um, but, you know, so what we're looking at is whether VNS can, can block that. That first week of opioid withdrawal is very dangerous because if people go back and use, their opioid receptors have started to shift and they're at a high risk of overdose death because they're going to go back and use the same amount and then their brain is not responding to it the same way. And so that's the danger period is the first week. Man, I fell asleep behind the wheel and went over the side of the mountain. Three quarters of the way down hit it oak tree. It was a long ago crash and over a year hospitalized that Brandon says got him addicted to prescription painkillers. It just hit. Don't want to go through that again. The memories are, are like horror memories. So far, Brandon's time in the hospital going through withdrawal has had its ups and downs. Rough off and on. He says he is committed to trying a different way because the cost to his life has been too great. If one person could get something out of what I'm doing, all that I've gone through, I mean, being homeless, losing everything, uh, all that was worth it. At the end of the week, Brandon is sent home with a vagus nerve stimulation device to use twice a day, plus a prescription for the medication-assisted treatment drug, Suboxone. Here are four vagus nerve exercises. If you go look on TikTok or, or YouTube, you'll see a lot of people doing what I would call hacks of the vagus nerve system, whether it's plunging your arm into a bucket of ice water or doing variations on trying to affect your breathing. I'm going to teach you how to reset your nervous system. Indeed, the vagus nerve has struck a nerve on social media with people seeking stress relief and well-being. Exercises like deep breathing or cold exposure are popular. So I went ahead and filled my dish here with ice. It is true that you can, you can uh, activate your vagus through manipulating your breathing and doing other things. Can Pulsetto really help with stress, anxiety, and sleep? Companies are now making vagus nerve stimulation devices that don't have medical advertising, but describe them as lifestyle enhancers. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Five weeks later, we meet with Brannon again. Have you used opioids since we saw you five weeks ago? No. You haven't used any? No. How about craving for them? A, a little bit. He says while he's not used the VNS device at home as much as he's supposed to, it definitely made a difference. It actually helped chill me out. It helped relax my nerves. Uh, it put me more at ease, especially with during the uh, withdrawal. Vegas is the Latin word for wanderer. This traveling nerve is proving to have potent benefit in many ways. You know, it's a um, non-invasive intervention that, that is, doesn't have any side effects that I've seen. It kind of works for everything, and it's uh, almost like kind of a magic treatment. <laughs>